It's a well-known fact that some people catch diseases much more easily than other people. For example, there are people who are so susceptible to spring fever that they even have it in November. People such as Mr. McGee of Fibber McGee and Molly. <sighs> My goodness, dearie, all you've done this morning is yawn. I hope it's not the company. No, it's just me, kiddo. I got no more pep than a teaspoonful of flat ginger ale. <laughs> I certainly don't know why you should be tired. You went to bed early and had ten hours sleep. How was I laying when I went to sleep? On your back. How was I laying when I woke up? On your stomach. I thought so. It's that rolling over that wears a guy out. <laughs> you know, dearie, much as I hate to say it, hmm? there are times when I think you must be the laziest man in America. Oh, no, not me. I guess I never told you about old Henry Burwanger, a fellow that I'm a human dynamo compared to from Peoria. <laughs> You mean he was lazier than you? Oh, Henry never even brushed his teeth until somebody asked him a question he could answer no to. Yeah? Then he'd stick the brush in his mouth and shake his head back and forth, see? <laughs> well, I'm sorry you picked today to try for his championship. I need your help around the house. What kind of help? Well, I just finished a new batch of preserves. You could put the jars up on the pantry shelf. Oh, gee, kiddo, it ain't healthy to work indoors on a day like this. It's too stuffy. All right, the yard's full of leaves. You could rake them up and burn them. Gee, kiddo, it ain't healthy to work outdoors on a day like this. <laughs> it's too chilly. I give up. If those aren't the flimsiest excuses. Come in. Oh, good morning, Dr. Gamble. Good morning, my dear. And a passing glance at you, leadhead. <laughs> Hi, Jelly Tummy. <laughs> Which would rhyme if there wasn't a lady present. Would you like a cup of coffee, Doctor? There's still some on the stove. Oh, thanks, Molly, but I just had some at the McGregor's house. I dropped by to see how Mrs. McGregor felt after her operation, and she insisted I stay for breakfast. Oh. oh. Say, uh, I thought you operated on her three months ago. <laughs> it's almost four months. Well, then why are you still calling on her? Does she have complications? No. Adhesions? No. Well, then what does she have? The best pancakes in town. <laughs> I might have known. You're the only doctor I know who spaces his house call, so he always gets there just at mealtime. Who keeps your appointment book, Duncan Hines? <laughs> I know more good places to eat than he does, my boy. Yeah. You had any other calls this morning, Doctor? Yes, I got a frantic call from Clarence Bobbitt that he'd gotten something in his eye. So I stopped by there and did what I could to relieve his pain. My gosh, what a panty waste that Bobbitt must be. Gets a speck of dust in his eye and yells for a doctor right away. I didn't say he got dust in his eye. Huh? He had an argument with his wife and got a well-aimed fist in it. <laughs> What was the argument about? Well, they found a $10 bill hidden under the rug, and both of them claimed it. Who got it? I did for treating his eye. <laughs> and now the Wistful Vista garage will get it. The garage, huh? Mm -hmm. What's the matter? That old bucket of bolts you drive falling apart again? No, it's running fine, but it needs a polish job. Too bad they don't make cars out of blue serge. What you mean? Well, my pants get shinier all the time, and it doesn't cost me a penny. <laughs> Do they really charge $10 for polishing a car? Yes, and I hate to pay it. You don't have to pay it. Polish the car yourself. You're a big, strong boy. Oh, not me. That's a chore, son. Okay, if you're scared of a little work. Heavenly days. <laughs> Listen to who's talking about being scared of work. Have you ever polished your own car, McGee? It's a big job. Ha! Only seems like a big job to you on account of you ain't the type of guy that works like I'm one that loves to. <laughs> Oh, the lightning will strike any minute now. I still say you couldn't polish a car. Oh, yeah, well, I'll bet you a buck I can polish it. I'll bet you a buck I could do it blindfolded. Are you serious? Sure. Then put your money where your mouth is. Huh? <laughs> well, there isn't enough money in town to fill that wind tunnel. Oh. You're betting me a buck I couldn't polish my car with a blindfold on? Right. It's a bet. This will be the easiest buck I ever made in my life. Uh, McGee, are you actually going through with this? All the way. Bring me the car polish and some rags out of the storeroom, kiddo. And bring an extra rag to blindfold me with. All right, dearie, if you insist. <laughs> Winning this bet from you is going to be a cinch, Fatso. I ought to call the Poultry Razor's Gazette and tell them about this. The Poultry Razor's Gazette? Yeah, I got myself a 300-pound pigeon, boy. <laughs> Hold 
still, McGee. I want to put an extra knot in this blindfold. Well, put all the knots in it you can tie, elephant boy. I'm going to win this bet fair and square. Oh, sure, sure. Well, mm. can you see anything? No, no, no. Not a, not a glimmer. Boy, I might as well be standing in a coal mine at midnight trying to hit a black cat with a handful of licorice. <laughs> Good. Do you have the polish and the rags, Molly? Right here, Doctor. Well, then I'll take our hero by his hot little hand and lead him to his doom. Oh, yeah. Doom my clavicle. I said I could polish my car blindfolded and I meant it. You've lost a buck, Pudge Pot. Uh, we'll see about that. Careful going down the steps. There's five of them. There's six of them. Well, it was worth a try. <laughs> You know, it isn't too late to call the whole thing off, dearie. What? Call off the cinchest bet I ever made in my life? Don't be naive, Tootsie. Don't be naive. <laughs> I remember the last inch bet you had. What was that? Five dollars with more tubes that you could take off your vest in a phone booth without unbuttoning your coat. Well, that was one of the... You put the splints on his arm that time, didn't you, doctor? <laughs> yes, I did. I ran across the bill in my file the other day. Still open. <laughs> All right, don't stand here post-morteming my bets. Just leave me to my car, Petzl. It's parked right at the curb. You're almost on top of it now. Stop, put your hand out. Oh, yeah, there it is. What part of it am I hitting? The front fender. Good, I'll start with that and work back. All right. Let's have the polish, kiddo. Here you are. I opened the can for you, dearie. Thanks. I'll just grab a rag and get to work. My gosh, why'd you bring such a big rag? All I needed McGee, was... let go of my skirt. Oh. <laughs> I'm sorry, Tootsie. I've worn it for eight steady years, and I admit a rag describes it very well. But you can't use it with me in it. No. <laughs> Here, use this old towel. Well, now watch closely, Fatso. See how an expert does it. First, I put some on a rag. Then I spread it around with my special smooth, smooth circular motion that that covers. Well, good morning, everybody. Hey, what's going on here? Good morning, Mr. Wilcox. Well, good morning, Harlow. This eager little extrovert claimed he could polish a car blindfolded, so I'm letting him make a grease monkey out of himself. <laughs> yeah. Don't listen to him, Junior. I guarantee that when I finish, this buggy will be smoother than a politician's tongue. Well... Looks like a slow job, Val. I hope you're through by day after tomorrow. Mighty important day, you know. Oh, of course. Thanksgiving Day. Ah, what a great occasion it'll be. This year, we have a special extra reason for being thankful. What's the special reason, asked little Fibber, feeling somewhat like Abbott speaking to Costello? <laughs> well, this year, for the first time in many years, you can have all the Reynolds wrap you want. That oh. wonderful aluminum foil that ensures a perfect Thanksgiving dinner. Mm. Even with a blindfold on, I should have seen that one coming. <laughs> yes, your grocer has plenty of Reynolds wrap now. In the standard 25-foot rolls or the new jumbo economy 75-foot rolls. I uh, even wrote a little poem about the ways it can be used on Thanksgiving. You uh, care to hear it? What could I say to stop you? Nothing. Mm. <laughs> I thought so. Well, I call it, Be Thankful for Reynolds Wrap. Thankful for Reynolds Wrap. Yes, yes. It goes like this. <clears throat> Be thankful for Reynolds Wrap, in which you can roast your turkey, including the gizzard and the liver. It keeps the meat from shrinking and also keeps in all the delicious flavor. <laughs> well, I'm glad Thanksgiving is two days off. This would kill my appetite. <laughs> when you bake your Thanksgiving pies... There's a sure way to take the trouble out. Just put Reynolds wrap under the plates to catch the rich juices when they double out. Yeah, you could use a blindfold too, Junior, around the mouth. Now, wait a minute, wait a minute. When dinner is done, you can keep the leftovers fresh in Reynolds wrap, and they'll make many a tasty dish, such as turkey croquettes and turkey soup and large portions of turkey hish. <laughs> Well, that's it, pal. Not bad, eh? But, well, Junior, I can answer that best with a poem of my own. Yeah? Poets are supposed to suffer and write on busted pine tables because they can't afford mahogany. But when Wilcox is the poet, it's the people who have to listen that suffer all the agony. <laughs> You better get back on the job, McGee. Don't worry. While you were gabbing, I was rubbing away. 
<laughs> the fender's done, and I'm ready to start on the door. Careful, dearie. Don't drop the polish. I won't. Hey, somebody must have left the door of the car open. I got my hand on the seat cover, but I never knew the seat had a bulge in it like a watermelon with a vest on. McGee, take your hand off my stomach. Oh. <laughs> Sorry, Doc. My mistake. Pretty natural one, too. The door's behind you, McGee. Okay. Oh, I got it now. Here we go. You know, I'm not sure about that circular motion. Why don't you rub it up and down and get more of it? My dear, I'd appreciate the courtesy of you letting me do this in my own way. Have I ever tried to tell you how to do a job? Yes. Really? Well, you must have been doing it all wrong. (laughs) What was the job where you got the benefit of my greater knowledge and experience? Well, I was learning to drive the car. Yeah? We were going down Oak Street behind a bus, and I couldn't get around it. Oh, yeah, I I remember now. (laughs) You told me to pass him on the right, and I started to, and he cut into the curb, and Mm. I cut into a fire plug, and you grabbed for the wheel, and there was a glass crash. And the Bontown Department Store got its picture in the paper for the most interesting window display. <laughs> Us. Well, now and then something just goes wrong that you can't... Hi, go- daughter! Hi, Johnny! Hi, Doc! Hello there, kid. Hello, Mr. Old Good morning, old timer. Hi, boy. And before you start asking questions, I bet Doc I could polish a car with a blindfold on, and that's what I'm doing. Well, it's an interesting hobby, Johnny. Personally, I'd rather collect seashells. It ain't a hobby. It's a tough job of work. But when I'm through, this car will have such a polish that you can see your face in it. Uh, if you don't mind, I won't bother. Yeah? It's been 40 years since looking at my face was a treat. <laughs> okay, I ain't forcing you. But I'm glad to see you working so hard on that car, Johnny. Good. Reminds me of the love and care Papa used to take of his favorite car, his old manly steamer. Wasn't that a Stanley steamer, old-timer? No. Papa built this steamer himself, and you had to be real manly to ride in it. <laughs> Oh, he uh, built it himself. Yep, out of a bathroom water boiler, a pot-bellied stove, and a surrey without no fringe on top. How did he operate this contraption? The stove was in back of the surrey with a boiler sitting on it full of water. Papa would build a fire in the stove, wait for the boiler to get up ahead of steam, and off he'd go. When he wanted more speed, he shook down the ashes. You mean he actually rode in that thing? Sure did, daughter. Every Sunday he'd climb up on the driver's seat right over the pot-bellied stove. It was a pretty picture to see him sitting there in his best hat, his best coat, and his asbestos pants. Just drove on Sundays, huh? Yep. Not the rest of the week cutting down trees for fuel. <laughs> Luxury type car, and he only got three miles to a cart of wood. I bet he had a lot of fun, though. Yep, and he tried to make money with it, too. Johnny? Yeah? Never will forget the time Papa entered the manly steamer in an auto race. Well, how'd he do? How'd he do, son? Nice to see you, too. <laughs> anyway, there were three prizes in this race, and Papa won them all. Won all three prizes? Yep. When they was getting close to the finish line, the manly steamer blew up. Yeah? The water boiler finished first, the pot-bellied stove finished second, and Papa and the Surrey come in third. <laughs> Oh, my back. Ache's bad enough to be busted in half. Care to quit, my boy? And let you win the dollar? Oh, no. I've been polishing this car almost two hours now, and I'm going to finish the job if it fractures my sacro and permanently injures my liliac. (laughs) Well, you're almost through, aren't you, dearie? All but the right rear fender. My gosh, well, I'd be glad to get this blindfold off. I feel like something was, was raised by a family of gophers. There is a certain resemblance now that you mention it. Well, you won't have the blindfold on much longer, dearie. Just be brave. (laughs) Don't worry. The thought of taking a buck from old hard loser Gamble, Wistful Vista's leading tightwad and well-known bad bet maker, will sustain me. My dear. (laughs) But I wouldn't do this again for all the tea and bags. My arms are about to drop. Good afternoon, Molly. The doctor. Oh, good afternoon, Mr. Oh, hi, La Trivia. In case you didn't notice, I'm here, too. And if you'd like to know what I'm doing... You're polishing the car because you could bet Dr. Gamble you could do it blindfolded. How'd you know? Simple. I thought of the most ridiculous thing a man could do, and it had to be right. (laughs) Oh. One of your snippy days, huh? Hey, look, Molly, do you mind if I duck in the house and phone my office? Go right ahead, Doctor. Don't let him take that blindfold off of the bed's off. <laughs> You're stuck and you know it, boy. 
What's new, Homer? Yes, we haven't seen you since the election, Mr. Mayor. Been busy, have you? Oh, yes, yes. Just the usual after-election headaches, Molly. Some of my campaign people worked very hard to get me re-elected, you know. It must have been an uphill fight all the way, boy. Yes, yes. (laughs) You, uh, You know how it goes in politics. I made a few promises to my workers here and there, and now that I've been re-elected, I have to pay the piper. What'd you promise him, Latrice? <laughs> what did I promise who? The man who played the bagpipes, Mr. Yeah. Mayor. You just finished saying you had to pay the piper. Oh, oh. <laughs> I'm afraid you misunderstood. You must have uh, put on some pretty flashy praise. Huh? <laughs> you hired a guy just to play the bagpipes for you. After the Scotch vote, were you? No, 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 no. Just a moment, please. There seems to be some confusion here. I yeah. didn't hire any bagpiper to lead any parades for me at all. Do you understand that? Probably oh. just had the man march up and down in front of the poles playing his pipes. <laughs> yes, that... Yeah. Oh. No, no, no. <laughs> I just love to hear bagpipes, Mr. Mayor. Oh, is my Uncle Dennis crazy about them. Yeah, remember the year we bought him bagpipes for his birthday, Molly, and put them up in his room? Yeah. <laughs> And he was out celebrating and came in late and found them there. Yeah. He come running downstairs for my shotgun, screaming there was an octopus in his bed. <laughs> oh, boy, that was fun. I'm sure it was. <laughs> However, in my case, bagpipes had nothing to do with my re-election as mayor of this city. I simply ran oh, on his Oh, no, I wouldn't sell them short, Mr. Mayor. That's mighty exciting music. Betcha, when all the guys got to run on is your record, Latrivia. There's nothing like a burst of bagpipe music to distract the voters. I should say so. Beat their ears with those bagpipes a while, and they don't know who they're voting yeah. for. Yeah, but please, please, Molly McGee, will you just listen to me for a moment, please? Yeah. You listen to him, Molly. I'm blindfolded. <laughs> now, this whole thing is all confused. Yeah? Now, look, I didn't mean I was actually going to pay a man for playing the bagpipes at all. You see? Well, if that don't knock the shine off the polished job... Trying to welch out on paying the poor guy, huh? No, no, no. Heavenly I, days. I, Hires a man to what? walk the streets, blatting his brains out on the bagpipes, and then won't pay him. I didn't fire a man to blast the bags out of his drain pipe. <laughs> Drain the snags out of his fast night. Huh? I, yay! Look, when I thought I had to pay the paper, uh, pay the paper, curious paper, I didn't mean I had to first pay the piper at all. Uh, a big pie the blind pipe level at all. A big pie to the blind pipe. I didn't pay the You were the one. I was... Pay the piper. I... McGee. Yes, boy? I'm taking a party of friends out to Dugan's Lake duck hunting in the morning. I'd like you to join us. Oh, swell, swell, boy. Where will I meet you? Out at the lake. Yeah. And when you come through the marsh, McGee, quack like a duck so you'll know it's you. <laughs> okay, fine. We'll be waiting for you. <laughs> Good day. Don't you go, dearie. <laughs> You're liable to... Oh, did you uh, talk to your office, doctor? Yeah. Uh, did your little cheater take his blindfold off? Not a peep, doctor. He's just about finished, though. Yep. Just polished the last hunk of fender. Boy, I bet you I got the cleanest, shiniest car in town. How's it look? Absolutely beautiful. And probably better than the job Doc's going to pay ten smackers for. Well, how about it? Do I win, Fatso? You win, McGee. Good. Never thought you could do it. Hmm? Take off the blindfold and see how it looks. Yeah. My gosh, I'm so used to it, I forgot I was still learning. Now, off it comes. Ooh, like that. Oh, boy. That is a honey of a job. Boy, my back will be sore for a week, but it's worth it. If I can prove I... 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 Hey. Yes? That's not my car. <laughs> That's your car. I know it. <laughs> Yours is parked over there. Why, you big fat double crosser, you. <laughs> well, that's why you put the blindfold on me in the house. <laughs> oh, stop beating me. Why? You won the bet, and I'm happy to pay off. Why? Especially since it saves me $9. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> and you, kiddo. You. The wife I took for better half or worse. <laughs> you helped him bamboozle me. I did that. I thought you deserved a little lesson for not helping me with the household chores. Huh? Benny, oh, there's no harm done. No harm done? You call it no harm when for a measly buck, I busted my back and made myself a flunky for this lunkhead who ain't got the... Hey, wait a minute. What now? Is that the stuff you brought me to polish Duck's car with? Yes, that large can. There's no label on it, but it was where you always keep the wax. Oh. <laughs> oh, my gosh. I'm sorry, George. This huh? is a dad ratted chain, you know what? With the blindfold on, I couldn't see what I was using. What do you mean? What's the matter? That ain't car polish. Huh? The filling station asked me to give that stuff a try. That's a new kind of paint remover. What? <laughs> Remover. Yeah. You oh. spread it on and leave it on for 24 hours, and then all the paint peels off. You... <laughs> I don't know. Oh, no. Yeah. Get the hose. Get yeah. me some soap. Oh. Get a scrubbing brush. You have me blindfold, right? McGee, the doctor's still trying to wash that stuff off his car. Well, let him. I ain't going to help him. Oh, this is terrible. Huh. I never dreamed it was paint remover in that can. It wasn't. That's the same polish I always use, kiddo. <laughs> You mean... Why, sure. You don't think I'd let old Fatso put one over on me, do you? 